Hi everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In case you are new here, I do want to let you know that I am a former K-2 teacher who likes to upload strategies, tips, ideas, and games every single week here on YouTube that you teachers can take and use in your classroom right away. I already have over 100 videos here on my channel and I love to keep adding more. If that sounds like something you would like, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of all of my new videos. Today I wanted to go ahead and talk a little bit more about the platform Seesaw. Now I already have this video right here which is all about how I create lessons in Seesaw. I will go ahead and have that linked above and in the description down below. And in that video I really kind of walk you through the basics. How to make lessons by uploading PDFs, how to make lessons with movable images, how to share links, and different things like that. In today's Seesaw video, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper and talk about some of the organizational features of a Seesaw that I think are not only fun, but also visually appealing and I think will really help you in your distance learning journey. So in today's video, we're going to talk about three different things to help you organize your lessons. We're going to talk about the skills feature. We will talk about the folders feature to organize things, and we'll talk about collections. And I hope you enjoy this video. Let's go. Hey guys, so first I wanted to go over the skills part of Seesaw. I think it's a fun way to just go ahead and kind of informally assess where your students are at with any sort of skill that you have taught. So first, in order to just see your skills and what they look like, if you're on your Seesaw dashboard, this little graduation cap over here, you will press. And what it will do is it will show you all of the students in your classroom. Right now, this is just a sample class I have with a sample student and my two sons. And I don't actually assess their assignments, just throwing that out there but this is just for the example. And then so far I've only created two little skills here. And basically these ones and zeros are part of a rubric that I will show you how you can easily uh, create that. So if you can go ahead and imagine here with me that everybody had done this one, the addition within 20, Theo's is green, green according to this scale, which again, I'll show you how to edit. The green scale means the best. He, you know, passed it with flying colors, no problem. Some might be orange, some might be red. And again, you can kind of pick what those colors should mean, but that's a nice visual way to go ahead and see the skills right there. Now, in order to assign and create a skill, let me show you, we'll go back to our journal here. We'll go to our library. Now in my activity library, it's important to note that you probably will not want to assign a skill check to every single activity that you are doing on Seesaw. Um, you know, some of the activities are just for fun, but if you want to go ahead and assess them, this would be, this would be an example of one that you might go ahead and actually assign a skill for and a little bit of a grade. Um, so here on cover up, this would be if you had already taught students how to add within 10 and you wanted to go ahead and just assess their understanding of identifying different equations that equal the sum 10, this would be an activity you could send to them and go ahead and, you know, check it off on a rubric of some kind. But let's create a new one. So if I go to digital personal narratives, we'll pretend we're doing a writing one here, and you'll press assign to your class. So once you have the assignment in and you are ready, then you will choose your class and you'll go to edit folder, students, folders, and skills. Now I'm gonna just assign it to all my kids. The folders will go over in a minute and skills right here. Now, if I wanted to add a new skill, and I actually did this one already, you would go right here and you would say identifying a small moment. And we will pretend that the this code can be maybe a code within your own school, however you're kind of, however you are, you, whatever identifier you're using to uh, address a skill. So I don't know, let's say you're using the common core standards, right? That's the easiest one. We can say one point. W.3. I don't think that's correct, but we're going to pretend that is identifying a small moment. Just go with me here. And then you'll press check. You can add more if you want to. That's up to you. And then for this, you'll actually go ahead and click it. 
This is the one I did earlier. It doesn't matter, grade, first grade. So we'll click that right there. So we have all the students will get it. The folder I will add in writing since I will talk about that in a minute. And skills, checked right there. Press the green button and you can assign to your class. Now, when you go to the activity and once your students are able to start submitting their assignments, you can actually check their skill. And you can see here that the skill is attached because right next to it, it has the little cap and it says there's one skill being um, added here or there's one skill being addressed. This one right here, the cover up edition, doesn't have the skill assigned yet. So what you can do is you can click this, um, the three buttons, you can press edit activity. And I believe you can go down to more options, teacher notes, skills. If you've already assigned something and you want to add a skill to it, you can do it this way. So go to edit. And let's say this was our addition one, right? Addition within 20, that's not correct, but I'm showing you an example. If you wanted to go ahead and press addition within 10, you could just add a new skill right here in the same way we did before. Let's say this is still 10A3. Again, I'm kind of making that up. Added. So now that this is here and it is added, I can click that and press the green check mark. And now this assignment, if students haven't submitted it yet, they can now, every time it comes in, you can also assess their skill. So let me show you what it looks like when you go ahead and assess the skills coming in. So what I did is I went ahead and pretended to fill out the assignment like I was Theo. And what I can do is I can like it, I already did that, press like, you can go ahead and comment, say great work Theo, and I can actually press the button right here, which shows me there's one skill to assess. Now the skills will show up, the one that is tagged is at the top so you can easily find it, and basically this is on a one through four rubric scale. So if he did amazing and he filled out everything correctly, I can go ahead and click all four stars. You will, of course, have to decide what you want this rubric to be, what the one, two, three, and four means, um, and it can be as detailed or as not detailed as you'd like. So let's pretend he just did amazing, bada bing, bada boom, skill updated, he is graded. Now, when you go to your skills, like we had before, here I have another skill that is now here, identifying a small moment. Theo did excellent, he has all four, it is green, voila. As more students go ahead and complete the assignment and depending on how many stars you give them, let's click this one and say that I need to, maybe I need to reassess, maybe he didn't get all three, maybe he got, you know, two stars on this. You can update it, that way you can easily go ahead and see what it would look like if it was a different color, right? And then so also over here, you can just look by one skill, let's say you just want to look at that small moment for a minute and you'd see your whole class. You could also just go by student. If I wanted to see just how Theo's doing here, I can see, oh, great with addition, needs a little work on identifying a small moment, et cetera, with all your skills there that you want to assess. Now, let me just lastly with skills show you how to manage them and add, like making the rubrics that you want right here. So when you get to, let, let me talk that through, you click the little wrench, you are in class settings, scroll down to skills right here, now, if you press manage skills, you can also add new skills just like I did in the other ways in this video. That's just another way to add some new skills. You can make the rating skill three stars, four, five, or six, and you can choose a color scheme that you would like to, again, easily kind of identify where your kids are at. So that is how you can use skills to check how your students are doing and just get an overall idea and an overall kind of grasp about where they are at. Okay, now for a couple easy ways to organize some of the activities that you have in your Seesaw platform. If you're assigning a lot through here, it can actually get pretty disorganized pretty quickly. So I wanted to just show you a couple ways to organize the activities that you are assigning as well as the ones that are in your own library. So first I wanna talk about the folders feature. And if you're in your dashboard and you're looking at journal here, actually it might be on activities too, yeah. Journal or activities, you see this little folder 
right here. You can go ahead and click it. Now you can create as many folders as you would like. Um, right now I have math activities, reading comprehension, writing. You'll press manage folders and let's create a new one. Let's pretend we need a science folder. So science, we will say it is green. And there you go. We already have it. So if you are a primary teacher and you are assigning all of the different skill, all of the different subject areas, this would be a good way to go ahead and organize them. And that way, once students are completed, once they have completed an assignment and you're just looking to figure out how they did in writing that day, you can easily navigate that. Another reason I like folders, I've actually met with two different schools over the last couple of weeks and both of them, we kind of talked through how a specialist would go ahead and assign things through Seesaw. Now there's a few different ways to do that and I'm not gonna go into it in the video, but one of the easiest ways they found where if you had a co-teacher or if you had a, like I said, a specialist, they could actually just join your classroom and you could create a folder just for them. So let's create a folder and let's say this is music lessons. So each individual, each individual teacher could do this if they wanted to. And that way the music teacher, if they came in, in into your, you know, joined classroom and they could create a lesson and upload it within the music lesson section. So let me show you once you have your folders here, let's go ahead and show you how you would assign it. So we'll go to your library. Now I don't have any music lessons, so let's just you know hop to the community real quick and find a quick music lesson for pre-K. Look at music yoga cards. Perfect, we'll pretend. So I'm gonna go ahead and like this so it is in my library and let's assign it. Now, just to put in here, I would, you know, edit this, of course, so it doesn't say love Mr. S, you'd make it all yourself. You could add, you know, any sort of audio or visual directions that you wanted to, but now let's go ahead and assign. And we're assigning it to my class. Here is where you'll go to the edit students, folders and skills place again. And now let's say you're assigning it to all your students. Folders, this is going to go in my music lessons. And I talked about last time, but there's really not a skill that I have for this. If your music teacher wants to go ahead and add a skill here, and not just these specialists too, but also for skills and folders, if you have reading specialists like I was previously and I worked with just small groups of students, this would be a great way for me to, like I said, assign my own little folder here. And if I wanted to, I could also add a skill if there's different things I'm checking than the primary teacher is. So we'll do music lessons, students, and we can go ahead and assign it. There we go. So that is assigned. If you go to the journal, what you can easily do, let's say, again, mine doesn't have too much in here. I clean it up often because I am not currently teaching an actual class, but your journal can get pretty messy pretty quick, right? So can your activities. It can just get a little, a little hard to look at at times. So this would be an easy way. You can go to your activities and just click your folders here to see, to find whatever you're looking for. So the music teacher can hop right in. They can just press, okay, here's my music lessons. That way they don't have to sort through all of the activities that you've assigned for other subject areas. Same with that reading or writing specialist. And just for your own sake as well, this is something I would probably want to do if I was just looking to find a math activity or something like that. So there are folders. I hope those are some, give you some examples on how to use those in your classroom and why they might be beneficial for organizing all of the activities you're assigning to your kids. Now, I also wanna show you one last thing. If you go back to your library, your activity library, there's also, I find that when I have too many assignments here, and again, I clean mine up often because I, I'm not in a classroom right now. So I will delete things I'm not using like this one right here. I'm not actually using. So I will go ahead and remove from my library just so it's not there. But I do have a lot of other activities that I keep in my library, especially ones that have links to um, TPT products or links to my writing club or math club because they have to stay here. If I've created an assignment and I've shared it 
with other teachers in any sort of fashion, it has to stay in my library. Otherwise, what if it's gone, the links don't work. The activity is not there. So I wanted to go ahead and show you my collections. So what you can do here, again, it can get pretty messy if you have all your activities, even when you go to view all. If there's an assignment that you are looking for, I have found that it was easiest for me to organize them by my collections. So if I'm looking for something for my math club, and again, yours will probably, you know, say math activities, writing activities. If the music teacher is on there, they could have their own collection. So it's just right here. You can edit this, edit your collection. I think all you can do, yeah, you can give it a description and change, you know, the color that you'd like it to be. So not too much to add here. But I do like that if you start adding things and you forget to add it to a collection, you can go right down here and it will say, here's some activities not in a collection. Go right there. Here is a color number thing that I had organized. I can put it right in my math club and I can view my collection. If I hadn't already assigned something, you'll just click on, wait, this is in my collection. Let me go back to the library. If you don't wanna do it that way and you wanna do it individually, you can click on any of these. You'll go to the three dots down below and you'll add it to whatever collection. If it's already there, it will tell you, which is pretty nice. And if you want to make a new collection, you can down at the bottom, create a new collection right here. New collection. This is just an example that I will be deleting. But there it is, new collection. And now anytime I want to add my activities in my library to a collection, I can add it there. So between folders and collections, it can be an easy way to just help you organize some of the activities and the things you have in your ever-growing Seesaw bundle. So there you have some ways that you can go ahead and organize your lessons going forward in a Seesaw just to make them easier for you to find, easier for students to find. And if you are doing any sort of grading or at least just trying to get a ballpark about where your students are at, that skills feature might be very beneficial to you. If you found this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. And if you have any other questions that were kind of sparked by watching this video or other ideas about how you use Seesaw in the classroom, please drop them down in the comments. I might be able to make a third video or at least share a quick tip over in my Facebook group. Just kind of answer those questions for you if I can't just respond to them down in the comments section. Like I said earlier, like this video, go ahead, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you on Sunday. Bye.